hello and welcome to this week's angling blog. I hope first of all that your families are all safe and well. The lockdown isn't too difficult with the lack of fishing and hopefully some of the content on the channel has helped pass the time a bit. So before we get into the rigs, if you are interested in passing the time with the fishing, there are over 200 videos on the channel. So head on over to the video section and check them out, all manner of fishing. And if you're looking for something to do in the daytime, if you look in the link below, there is a link to Facebook where we've been doing a couple of live streams with special guests like Mark from Cheshire Particle, Rob Mitchell on the River Seven, and a few more to come. So if you go and drop the Facebook page a like, there's always a live stream going on there during lockdown. So something a bit different this week and over the next couple of weeks, what we're going to be doing is looking at different parts of fishing, some hints and tips on trying to break those boundaries that exist in fishing. You know, them things that stop people from trying a new form of fishing. For too many years, I didn't try barbel fishing just because I didn't know where to start. So hopefully these videos will give people that bit of information for when the river's open later this year to go and try it and give it a go. Over the next couple of weeks, we'll cover stick float fishing, pike fishing and all in between. But this week, it's barbel. After the hints and tips bit, there will be one of the videos that we've done bank side where we've took the technique that we're going to show onto the bank and used it to catch some fish. Hopefully them sessions pass the time a bit and take your mind off the lockdown. So if you want to just watch the fishing, there'll be a number at the top of the screen now. If you want to just jump to that part of the video, then that's when the fishing will begin. These videos are there to show the hardware and the terminal tackle and the bait. The application of the bait you will see later on in the video when we take these tips and put them in a fishing situation. We'll start off with the rod and it's widely accepted that a 1.75 pound test curve rod is what most people will use for barbel fishing. It allows you to have enough power to play the fish but you're not overgunned for the fight. If you're just new to barbel fishing that is the type of rod that I would go with. It's a rod that will suit you for the River 7 on the Middle 7 and I used it on the River Y where I caught barbel up to and over £10. It's got that little bit of scope where you might get away with it you know if the river's a bit higher but for general fishing for barbel a £1.75 test curve rod is ideal. The rod that I used was the Corum Twin Tip which has been replaced now with the Trilogy Rod which again is an upgrade on that rod where you get three tips which will give you more scope to target the venues. If you're looking for a rod, an excellent choice, but have a look around and 1.75 pound test curve rod is what you'll be looking for. So the next thing you'll be looking at is the reel to go with the rod. Generally what I would do is go into the shop, put a rod together with different size reels and see how it feels. Not all rods are the same and they will balance differently with different size reels. Ideally, probably three to 5,000 size max is what I would go with. And I'd have one that included like a bait runner because that allows you then to use the bait runner set nicely. So if you do get a take off a barbel, you're not going to lose your rod. And it means you don't always have to sit with the rod in your hand. So the next thing is the line that goes on the reel. And obviously that's circumstantial to the swims that you're going to be fishing. For all the fishing that I did on the River 7 and the River Y, I used... 12 pound or 10 pound line depending on the swim that I was in. What you want is a nice abrasion resistant line especially if you're on the river wire with the rocks and obviously the river seven you want one that's got a good strength to it but like with all choices when it comes to terminal tackle you go with the one that you've got confidence in and one that's not let you down in the past so a nice 10 pound or 12 pound line is ideal. So now you've got the rod and the reel and the line all together. I'm just going to show you a nice simple rig that you can tie in seconds that will get you up and running when fishing for barbel. So if you're new to river fishing, it's a lot different than going your local commercial. Sometimes you might have to walk one or two fields to the river. So what I do is I really cut back on the gear and anywhere where I can save time and lightness in my backpack, I'll use that opportunity. As you can see here with the core and pouches, inside which contains all the terminal tackle that I'll need for a day's fishing. Inside the clamshell, I've got everything to tie the rig that you're about to see now. So to tie the rig, it's simplicity itself. Simply thread the line through the run ring on the bottom run kit, as on which you will have your feeder attached. Then pass the line 
through the bead. After that you'll want to attach your quick change swivel to the line. I use a Palomar knot to attach mine. Simply push the bead back over the eye of the swivel and then you can choose to either have the bolt and run kit running freely or you can push it over the little nodule on the clip which will keep it in place creating the bolt effect if you choose so. Then simply a case of putting the rig onto the quick chain swivel and pushing the sleeve over the top to secure it in place. So once you've done that what you will have is a nice neat presentation as you can see you've got the feeder you've got that locked in place if you want the bolt effect or you can have it free running like I said and then a nice neat presentation that reduces tangles because it sits just off the line the sleeve aids separation on the cast for when you're casting in nice and simple neat presentation so on the river conditions are always changing sometimes you might need a longer hook link you might want to change your bait what this rig allows you to do is to quickly unclip one rig and then simply clip on a different one and push up the sleeve and you're back fishing with a different presentation in seconds so the next thing we're going to talk about is rigs and one thing about lockdown we've got plenty of time to be tying up a couple of them and the beauty of barbel fishing is a bit like carp you can go super prepared you know do a lot of the prep work at home so it makes it easier when you're on the bank one thing that is easy when you're doing a lot of prep on lockdown is to tie loads of the same rig not knowing what the conditions are going to be like when we get back fishing I've tied up a couple of different rigs and I'll quickly go over the rigs that I've tied what we've got there is we've got a simple size 12 hook with a band on and that is for fishing a banded pellet like you can see on the screen now so I've got that to 8 pound line my imagining there is it's going to be a river that's low and clear and the barbel might be finicky when it comes to be opening at the start of the season certainly if this weather keeps up that is the conditions you're going to be faced with the next rig is the same type of rig but with a slightly bigger hook a size 12 or a size 10 hook and that is the 10 pound line again if you're going to be fishing near a snag that's going to give me the same presentation with the pellet but again a bit more stronger line if the swim requires it moving further along we've got some size 4 hooks and that is for fishing meat if the river's anything like last year it could be up and coloured and nice big hook tied simply with a palomar knot to the line easily piece of meat on and away you go and then at the very end we've got some rigs for fishing pellets if i want to you know use a baiting needle and put on a bigger pellet then i've got the option with a knotless knot there so nothing complicated with the rigs if you do any carp fishing you can tie a knotless knot or a palomar knot and an overhand loop dead simple to make and the good thing is loads of prep can be done before you go so finally we'll just talk about baits for barbel fishing again with baits it comes down to personal preference so i can just only talk about the baits that i used on the channel the baits that i used was the dynamite baits ground bait to plug the feeder in which i put cheshire particle hemp and the four mil sonia bait spicy sausage pellet on the hook just went with a six mil size pellet and if it was flooded i went with either luncheon meat or i used the dynamite baits big river and um, baits as well i found they were great when the river was flooded one item of tackle that i really found useful in all my fishing but especially the barbel has been the corum eva riddle you can fit everything you need bait wise in the riddle on top i've got the ground bait and my pellets and on the bottom i've got the feed pellets as well an excellent bit of kit and it fits nicely in the corum rucksack finally just before we get on to the fishing i'm just going to talk about being mobile on the bank it is so important when it comes to river fishing and if you are new to it it'll be the biggest difference that you'll see in your fishing if you're used to fishing lakes and commercials and stuff like that if you are going to go the river you could be a couple of fields from the car park so you want to be super light and mobile you don't want to be sat in a swim not wanting to move in such i can pack my gear right down to the bare essentials that all fit in my rucksack so the first thing I've got, nice box in there, I've got enough rigs to last me the day. 
in lockdown I've probably got enough to last me a couple of sessions in the next one all my feeders got a magnitude of feeders there and gripper leads all different scenarios the next pouch like I say got all the basics of need there to tie a rig starlight talked about this on this vlog all fits nice and neatly into that pouch and finally like you've seen on the video I've got my EVA ground bait riddle in all them I've got everything I need for a day's barbel fishing hopefully this vlogs give you a bit of an insight into the basics of barbel fishing it's broken down some of them boundaries that some people might have about trying it that's the basic tackle that you need the basic setup and the simple rigs to use for the day's fishing you don't need a load of tackle but you can have as you're about to see now a load of fun i hope you enjoy the video and stay safe So what a, a start, second cast and we're into the first fish of the session and the rod just smashed round and madness, the river's got a lovely colour to it today and when we first arrived on the river I said it looked like it was in fine form and this barely any bait has got into the swim it's come on the second cast bodes well for the session ahead have a look over the tactics we're going to be using today in a minute and hopefully we can get this fish in done a few sessions this year but one thing I've learned is when you get them in the edge it's never over they always go on that last run and it is a barrel it's just turned in the flow and hopefully this time when he comes in the edge we can, we can get him in the net And there's that lovely barbel. Hello and welcome to this week's blog. What a way to start. A lovely five pound barbel. And we're on the banks of the River Severn and hopefully the first of many. It's bank holiday weekend and it's quite warm. So let's get this barbel straight back and get the rod back out in the river. What a start. So having a bit of problem with debris coming down the river, pulling the line. But it's taken for about half an hour and four or five casts and we're into fish number two doesn't feel as big as that first one and what a beautiful little barbel that is and there we go fish number two and the fishing at the moment is going to be as good as me tan cracking uh it's a warm day that is a lovely lovely looking barbel look at the colors on that absolutely fin perfect and good sign for the river ahead with fish like this in the river it's got a future and yeah a really good sign for the river and a sign for the session let's have a look at the setup that we're using today to catch these barbel and get this little guy back to where he belongs let's get him straight in these warm conditions a large landing net is essential give them fish a good rest before they go back and if you're doing any blogging like i do give them a good rest before you even think about unhooking them and putting them in front of the camera this guy been blogged he's been in the net for about five or ten minutes and it's time for him to go back And back he goes. 
So set up for the session, I've got my 12 foot Corbin twin tip, I've got a Corbin shadow reel loaded with 10 pound line, I've got that down to a Corbin low resistance run ring on which I've got a Dinsmore's open cap feeder which I'm going to plug either side with the ground bait, got a bead on the line to protect the knot and obviously the run ring can't go over that. A sleeve to aid separation on the cast. As you can see nice and simple and neat. When it sits on the line like that, doesn't tangle on the way out. We pull that back, you can see there, just a simple quick change swivel. Push that over, push the bead over, nice and simple. And I've got 10 pound Drennan Suplex because we have got a bit of flow on today. To a size 12 hook and a banded Sonya Bates pellet. So what we'll do now, we'll have a closer look up at the components that make up the rig. So closer look at some of the components that make up the rig. We've got the camo running rig clips, which on which your feeder will attach. We've got them down to the, the buffer beads. I've got a quick change swivel on. We've got my main line which today is 10 pound suplex got a size 12 hook and they're the rig camo sleeves that we'll be using today and one thing that I have found useful is this 6 compartment clamshell that Corum do in which 90% of the components that make the terminal tackle can be stored it's a handy as you can see it's small and magnetic so it stays together small enough to fit in your pocket and dead handy for just carrying around on the sessions where you're coming for barber where you're not using much terminal tackle at all a fantastic little bit of kit so bait for the session you'll have to excuse the combine in the background treasure particle hemp and a couple of pints of it i've got some ground bait left over which is marine halibut from dynamite baits in there there's a bit of corn and a few pellets and a bit of uh, hemp and it is actually the ground bait that I had left over from the River Y session that I'll link at the top of the screen now. Put it in the freezer when we finished. And generally, with all baits, if it smells okay and it doesn't smell sour, it's good to go. On the hook, I've got an 8mm Sonja Bait spicy sausage pellet. And I've got some 6mm to go in the mix. And that is the bait that we're going to be putting in the feeder today for the session. So then, components that you've just seen there, all in action, and we're into the third barbell of the session. One thing I can guarantee is it's probably going to be bigger than the <laughs> than barbell number two. It's just holding nicely out in the current, and say it doesn't feel massive but with the extra flow on it's just great fun and what a start to the session it's been three barbell and i say when they come close in they always have that that lunge and this year been doing more barbell fishing than i've ever done i started doing a few sessions last year and it just whet my appetite for this for barbel they really are something else and in recent comments on the video people have said that they've never caught a barbel and they mean to go out and give it a go and the only advice i'd give you is just just go out and do it you won't regret it absolutely great fun there's just enough clarity in the water today for you to get a glimpse of them as they come up before they turn and there we go you can see there he's come up and he'll probably have one last 
pull. There he goes. Always have one last one. Let's see if we can get him in. Fish number three, six pound, three ounces. The best fish of the session so far. And yeah, got the evening to come and hopefully we can pick up one or two more as the evening cools. But what a start it's been. Three barbel and lovely colours on this one. Dark browns and orange fins. Let's get it straight back. Into another barbel and it is building into a nice session. I say that feed has gone within three minutes, four minutes of me putting it back out and could be in for a very good evening because really with the the sun on the water and when we were driving down it i thought we'd wait till you know evening for the chance of a bite but this extra color in the water and the pace is obviously got the barbel on the feed and the temperatures today have been over like 25 degrees that sun has been absolutely baking so we've chose a swim with some shading and like I said earlier on, giving them barbel plenty of rest before do the blogging and looking them, give them plenty of time before they go back. So what felt like a decent barbel has turned, I thought it felt really big, has turned into a foul hooked one. I think he's foul hooked in the in the side. When you foul hooked them, you lose any control or direction of you know pulling the fish towards you and just take your time and try and get them in you can see he's hooked in the top of the fin and when you think you've hooked one of the biggest barbel in the river <laughs> it turns out to be probably the second smallest of the session so with one barbel resting in the net the one that we hooked in the fin, put the rod back out, and we've got a lovely bend in the rod with the sun on the trees in the back, and a nice little small barbel. And in fishing, we have fine lines, don't we? Sometimes they come off, sometimes they stay on, but on the good sessions, they stay on. Another day, you get one bite, foul hooked it, and it comes off. Today, absolutely bite a chuck fish number four of the session and number five is waiting in the net fantastic fishing and what a lovely barbel holding its fin up proud fantastic days fishing second fish of the brace and literally can't keep a rod in the water at the moment fish number five and all in mink condition absolutely lovely fish the lovely colors and not a scale out of place you can see an absolutely beautiful fish second fish of a double take and I say literally the rods going in the water we can't keep a rod in the water I'm gonna put a couple of pictures on the screen now so we are on the banks with my mate Steve and he's had four in between all these ones that I've been catching so I'll pop a couple of pictures on the screen now of the fish that Steve's caught great session I'm moving in on the party, the ever-present shublet, snaffling that pellet and a proper wrap on the tip, but nothing like them barbel, <laughs> them barbel or something else. Let's get him straight back. That swim, we had nine barbel in total from that last swim, and about three hours ago we come up here and put a bit of hemp and pellet just on this line in front of these trees here just where the shadow starts there's been one or two barbel topping since we've arrived and yeah hopefully fishing just into the dark we can get a barbel on the bank it's too long at all the rod literally just recorded that clip saying we've moved pegs and the rod 
absolutely hooped over and we're not fishing too far out here on the other bit we were fishing quite a distance over the river probably a third halfway to two thirds here just on that white water and we're probably on the limit of what the the GoPro can actually record in and obviously fishing into dark is going to present its problems with with filming so I'll do my best and hopefully you've enjoyed the vlog to this part it's been great fun in the sun <laughs> literally it's been a scorcher today but great fishing I can't wait for the piking to start a lot of you lads love the piking but I tell you what when the piking starts I'm going to miss this barbel fishing this year I've thoroughly enjoyed fishing for these barbel on the, the 7 and the Y kettles on in the background and a well earned barbel and a brew it's been a thoroughly enjoyable warm day on the bank but yeah, we're getting to the limit of what I can record now and it's been a long day. It's bank holiday weekend, so I'm going to enjoy these last hour or two of the, of the session. And I'm looking forward to maybe getting one or two more of these lovely barbel on the bank. Let's get it straight back and get the rod back out there. into dark barbell number 14 for me and Steve and it's lovely just sat here listening to the owl in the background a lot cooler than today and just waiting for that rod to hoop over great fun there we go probably the smallest well equally smallest barbell of the day this one this morning was quite small and this guy nearly pulled the rod off the vest unbelievable take and then it had me under a tree to me left and I thought it was going to be a chub and what a feisty little character this is absolutely <laughs> what a take that the starlight bent double struck into it and this little guy barbel number 15 of the session and a lovely fish let's get it straight back a special fish to end the blog it's my 20th barbel of the season and a little bit of a landmark for me because like I say didn't do much last year and this year they've made a concerted effort to get out more on the bank and target these fish so yeah a nice way to end the blog just under six pound and with the stars above our heads it's a lovely evening and let's get this lovely fish back straight away thank you very much girl and what a fabulous day on the bank thank you very much for watching Tight lines in your own fishing, and I'll catch you all next time. Tight lines. And to those who have stayed on to the very end of the video, that is the best barbell of the day. Seven pound, six ounces, and a proper way to end the blog. So to you guys who stayed to the very end, thank you very much. Tight lines. And this time we definitely will catch it all next week. Tight lines.